In this video, I'm going to be talking about sound reactivity in Zwilbot. This is a feature that allows parameters to be adjusted based on the incoming audio. You'll know whether a parameter can be affected by sound reactivity because you'll see this high and low button underneath. So X means it's disabled, low means it's going to be impacted by the lower frequencies of the audio, and high means it's going to be impacted by the higher frequencies of the audio. So we can see what this looks like in practice. I've just got a drum loop here. Currently nothing is happening, but if I turn on this low, low pass setting, we can see that this dial is now responding to the lower frequencies, which in this case is a kick drum. And if I change it to high, it's responding to the higher frequencies, which it would be the cymbals. And if I put X, it's now disabled. So you'll notice when I turn this on, either with the high or low setting, you get this green highlighted area that controls the sensitivity so this will affect how sensitive the dial is based on the incoming audio. And I can change that just by clicking and dragging it up or down. So when I've got it right down, it's not responding much at all. And as I bring it up, it's going to be much more sensitive. So it's going to be getting higher and higher as I bring it up. On the Zwilbot player, that's the only control that has sound reactivity, but most controls on other modules will have it. So I can see I've got this stretch effects module here, and all three of these parameters can be controlled by sound reactivity. So if I turn these all on, I hit play, you'll see they're all now changing in response to the lower frequencies, so the kick drum. When it's on a parameter that doesn't have a dial, so for example, this isn't a dial like this is, as soon as you turn it on, you'll get this dial down here. So that's how you control the sensitivity when you're not applying it to a dial, it'll create a dial. And then I can control the sensitivity that way. So now it's not very sensitive, it's not moving at all. So if I want this to change, I'll need to boost up the sensitivity here. And now that I've brought it right up, it's responding to that kick. Now with these dials, the position that they're in before you turn the high or low feature on is going to impact how the dial actually responds, whether it goes up in response to the incoming audio or whether it goes down in response to the incoming audio. So I'll just demo that. So I've put it halfway. I'm gonna turn low on and press play. Right now we can see it's going up because the top half of the dial is highlighted with this green area, but I can click and drag down and now it's actually going down instead of going up. So every time there's a kick, it's turning the effect off. Whereas if I drag it up, every time there's a kick, it's turning the effect up. So you can choose whether you want the incoming audio to make the effect higher or lower based on where your dial is before you turn it on. So for example, if it's down here and now I turn it on, where the green highlighted area is, is going to tell you whether it's gonna go up and down. So I can see because it's in this area, the dial is gonna go down. Whereas if I move it, now it's going up. So that's something to bear in mind. If you're noticing that the dial is not going the way you want, you might just wanna turn the effect off reposition it and then turn it back on depending on what effect you want it to have obviously some modules 
like this Aussie one have their own built-in sound reactive controls. So here I can see there's this amplify control. So if I hit play, well, I need to turn this on first. I'll turn these off. This amplify control is going to determine how responsive this is to the audio. And I've got these high, low, but instead of X, which disables it, it's all. So basically all is going to make it respond to all frequencies. Or you can choose lower frequencies or higher frequencies. And then this will just control the sensitivity. So you mainly find that in these SRG modules, which stands for Sound Reactive Generators. So they're modules that generate visuals based on the incoming audio. So they have their own built-in sound reactive features. You can make adjustments to the low and high pass filters using the monitor module. So I've got that here. When you first drop it in, it'll look like this, but if you click this plus button to expand it, you'll get these sound reactive controls. So currently this is all set to the default setting. But what you can do is adjust the low pass here and the high pass here, and you can also use this to adjust the bandwidth of the filter. So when you might want to use this is if you've got a full track, for example, like this. Here I've got a bass part, a pad part, and drums, so there's quite a lot going on. So if I turn this low frequency on, it's responding to a lot of stuff because there's quite a lot of frequencies within that, within this low frequency range. So let's say I wanted it to just respond to the kick rather than the pads and the bass. I could try to adjust this filter. I could make the bandwidth a bit thinner, for example, and adjust this to try and get it to respond less to, for example, the pads and more to the kick drum. that's a bit better. You could also use the sensitivity of the individual parameter to adjust this. So you'd have to kind of play about a bit. You've also got this smoothing setting. This makes the movement of the dial between it going up and down a bit smoother. So if I hit play on this and I turn it right up to 10, you can see the dial moves a bit slower, whereas if I turn it off, it moves between its full setting and its lower setting a lot quicker. So it's a bit more kind of snappy compared to it being on. So if you want something to be more snappy and you don't want the effect to be on for as long, so for example, if I want it, like I say, to just be responding to the kick drum, I probably want it to be quite snappy to be to reflect the sound of the kick. So I would probably want to turn smoothing off for that. And you can just play about with these settings until you get the desired effect. One important thing to bear in mind with sound reactivity is that it's only going to respond to the audio that's coming in to the channel that that module is on. So if I wanted this stretch effect to be affected by the audio of this MIDI channel, it wouldn't work. For example, if I play this, Nothing is happening here because this is on a separate channel. So what I would have to do is move this onto this MIDI channel and now you can see it's starting to move. It's quite subtle because it's not that loud but you get the idea. 
Likewise, if I wanted this Keta effect to be impacted by these drums, nothing's happening because it's on a different channel. But if I move it onto the channel the drums are on, now we can see it's starting to have an effect. So you always need the module to be on the particular channel that the audio is coming through. A way around this is to route audio. So you could have the modules on an audio channel and then route your audio from other channels into that channel, or you can use send and return tracks. So it's not really an issue. There's always a way around it, but it's just something to bear in mind.